he's not a big star. Um, so we just kind of discovered this article and just thought, oh, this is an interesting story and that he'd been murdered and that there was a whole kind of rise and fall. And then, so that was 12 years ago, and then I wasn't even making films, and I was making large-scale video artworks for galleries, and then I started making films, made a, made a couple of films, and then just thought, I really want to make that Orion film, and then I couldn't get anyone to fund it <laughs> at all. So basically, we I raised like a tiny amount of development money, and whenever I was in the States, um, showing the sound it out or showing the great hip hop hopes. We did like one research trip, but I would just basically phone up my cameraman and say, come and pick me up. We'd do a screening of sound it out. And then I would just go and film and do the interviews. And originally I thought, oh, it's just research. But people that we filmed sadly like kept dying. So it's the film. <laughs> so the research became the film. And we basically shot 80 hours on a wing and a prayer before anyone finally film. So as soon as we've got that and I, I cut about 20 minutes um, everyone came aboard. So BBC Storyville, Film Camry Wales, Creative England and then 337 angels on Indiegogo funded, funded the film. So it was amazing. It was like dominoes. But that all happened last year. So it's just been this kind of weird background project that I've been making forever that I never thought I'd end. <laughs> would never end. So this is the final screening in a three-week tour of being at Tribeca in New York, Nashville, where we won the Grand Jury Prize, and I've got a Les Paul guitar on its way to England. Um, Toronto last week, and then you could see the How many film festivals did you apply to? And what was your ratio? Like, you applied at 50 in five cities. Once you get into a big festival, you don't have to apply to any more festivals. Where you I applied to, I sent it to Tribeca and then lots of other people. National said, oh, this sounds like the right festival. I always apply to Doctor because I've gone through so much for and because I have a good time here. Yes. And um, Hot Docs, yeah. But um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit tricky for, like if, you're, if you've made a few films, so this is my sixth feature. So as soon as my film's finished, the festivals usually want to see it. Well, they, I mean, they knew about this film, so I've been wanging on about it for years. <laughs> so they're ready to see it. And it next goes to Turin, Moscow, um, Croatia, and um, we're going to premiere at Sheffield in England in June. I have done nine screenings. <laughs> um, I think the idea of doing a DNA test is so tasteless. It's like lifting the mask. I just don't want to know at all. The, the reason why it's in the film is because this is a film about construction of identity. And um, I just, it just sounds like a sort of story that Shelby Singleton would have made up. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, like everyone would always like touch my knee and tell me, you do know you're well in the sun, don't you? I'm like, yeah, yeah. But then I saw the pictures, and the pictures are really convincing. But, um, yeah, I think that to find out, I mean, logistically and legally, to actually approach Elvis Presley Enterprises for, for Presley DNA is like a legal disaster. Uh, but also, I just, I like not knowing. It's like, it's like lifting the mask. And maybe he is, maybe he isn't. His son doesn't want to know and doesn't want to pursue that. And so that's something that we would need. Jim Ellis Jr. is permission for as well. But yeah, it's something we talked about a lot and thought about a lot. Did you think it, he looked similar? They're totally convinced. Yeah. And I was, I was the most unconvinced person of the all. And then the new pictures arrived from the archive house. And I was like, he was killed by three guys that were related and their uncles shot them to the police three days later. And they're currently on death row. And they've been there since, I think the trial was in 1999. So they've been there since then. Why did you choose to not include that question? Why did you choose to not include that Well, we, had it, we did have it in the car. And um, I, had, I was mentored by Marshall Curry, who's a really good filmmaker. And I had a lot of discussions with Marshall about that. And 
it's Jimmy's story, really. I didn't want to get into their story and what's happened to them. I figured it was something that I could tell people at Q&A or in a press release or, you know, on the website. But it, it seemed to take away from the moment of Jimmy. I think when he's, when he's murdered, it's so brutal and powerful that I just want to be with the emotion of that rather than knowing. And then this happened. And then this happened. Sometimes you just need to know less. Uh, are you an Elvis fan, or are you a fan of people, other people other than Orion that sounded like Elvis, like say Ralph Donner, or uh, Ray Smith, or other people in rock history that have sounded a lot like Elvis? Are you a fan of that? I'm a big Elvis fan, actually. Um, but I've become, I've, when I, I've listened to so much Jimmy Ellis, Orion music, that to me his voice sounds very, like I can totally tell when it's Orion. And I like, I just love Honey, and the tracks that are at the end, I think, are particularly good by Jimmy Ellis. Well, I like um, later Elvis, kind of stuff from around the, that's the way it is, Sus Suspicious Minds is my favourite Elvis track. Very late in the film, Jimmy's son says his problem was that he trusted everybody. And I'm curious whether you agree with that statement. Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I think that Jim, part of the reason why I was drawn to this story is that I think it's like an allegory for the way that people pursue fame today and um, that people go on American Idol or The Voice or X Factor or any of those things and think that it's going to be different for them. And they trust the people and the constructs around them. And I think that Jimmy just believed that it was going to be okay without really thinking through the consequences. And, you know, he's getting older, his life's moving on, and he's stuck in this kind of situation. But, I mean, lots of people said that he just trust, he trusted too much, or he had trust issues because of his early life. Really. There's a question up in the balcony. Feel free to shout out. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, number one, for finally doing a movie about Orion. <laughs> <laughs> number two, have you seen some of the recent footage of him with gray hair in the 90s? Uh, Last year it's come out. That's not in the which, movie. Well, yeah, there's a lot of footage that's not in the movie. Which footage do you mean? Um, Like, it's... 1990, him doing, uh, what, 100 pounds of play? He has, like, gray hair. Yeah. Total gray hair in it. Yeah. So you know about that? Yes. I mean, to be honest, I think I've shows, seen... He did do some shows in 92, which, not kind of close enough. Yeah, well, I mean, it's time. it's difficult, because we have to, um... I know you I can't show nice every... Life. Thank you. Sorry? Very much, it's so great. <laughs> um, it was tricky. We can't. We couldn't show every thing and every appearance he made. But you do know about that. Oh, believe me, <laughs> I have watched. <laughs> yeah, well, we showed him putting the mask back on again. But um, trust me, I have watched. I think every hour, second, minute of footage. I mean, we spent continual, continually tracking down everything, and archive and new pictures were arriving the month before we finished the film. Um, th there's two reasons why some of that footage isn't in. Partly is because otherwise the film would be 10 hours long. Yes. Um, yeah. It also got a bit confusing when his hair was white and then it would go black, and he'd look much older when his hair was white and black. So narratively, it got very confusing. But also purposely, we, we chose to not include everything because it has to serve the story rather than... Because, I mean, he went to Sweden a lot and did stuff out there. He was big in Europe. Yeah, but we couldn't... We could show you a flavour of that with him in Germany, but we couldn't do everything because then, you know, that's like a coffee table book and it needs to fit within a narrative. So, But that's what DVD extras are for. You've done an amazing job, that was what I'm saying. Thank you very much. Thank you.